Welcome to SDP for 2018. Uh, this subject uh, is uh, reasonably famous. The subject itself. In this subject, students learn how to design, develop, and evaluate a commercially realistic but manageably small software system meeting predefined functional and non functional requirements. The project is performed by highly autonomous teams that while supervised and directed, are ultimately responsible for the project and delivery of the expected outcomes. The primary objective is that the students experience, understand their importance, and can apply sound practices of software development from, from team formation and management, um, project planning and management, and all the primary processes of um, requirements, design, construction, testing, um, delivery. So in other words, you may have learned about programming, you've learned about business requirements, uh, you've done a certain amount of stuff, but uh, if I put you out there in industry, you probably wouldn't know what's going on. So in this subject, we step you through what happens in a software development project from all the project planning and management through to actually constructing the software so that when you get into industry, you actually can understand what is happening around you. So that's the purpose of the subject. The subject learning objectives, here are the things that you should uh, be capable of doing by the time you've finished. On successful completion of this subject, students should be able to investigate and solve software engineering problems with minimal supervision. Determine and balance competing goals of commercially realistic software engineering projects. All software engineering projects do have competing goals. Uh, the classic is the um, schedule, budget and quality. Pick any two. You should be able to plan and manage the software development project to completion. You should be able to apply sound software engineering practices to design, develop and evaluate software systems. You should be able to communicate project and system information to team members and other stakeholders. And you should be able to collaborate with team members to perform project tasks. So they are pretty reasonable objectives that we uh, try to achieve for each student by the end of the subject. The teaching strategy. This subject is entirely practice based. It's a project based, practice based subject. It duplicates commercial software development practices aided and guided by tutors knowledgeable about and experienced in software development. I mean, they, they're expensive um, because I, I do require that they do understand about software development before I engage them as tutors. Otherwise, they would not be able to assist you uh, in, in your project. So they do know, they knew, do know about software development and uh, w they can guide you in it. Students are guided about what to do, but left to discover and decide the best way of doing it in the circumstances. That is, you can choose which language you use, you can choose which variety of inspection method you're going to use, or coding methods or coding rules. You get to choose that. We don't. We don't dictate it to you. The subject does strive to teach sound software engineering practices without becoming unnecessarily formal. There's a certain amount of structure and uh, people have remarked that um, this subject claims to be agile but looks a whole lot like waterfall and some other subject looks like waterfall but looks a whole lot like agile. Well, that's, that's true and that's fair enough. Um, uh, at, at this stage, you have to um, understand enough about the different practices to be able to combine them into um, uh, different forms of de developing software. Now that is not for beginners, so we'll try and support you through this. Now you will also develop a small commercially realistic software system. More about that later. It is a team project. Now we found that a group, group works well together and gets better results. All right? That is a well-functioning group beats a group of hotshots. We've tried it and um, generally the hotshots uh, tend not to get such good results. Um, good teamwork beats good programming. I've seen both, uh, both tried. Uh, I've seen a, a 
some very interesting illustrations of the effects of good teamwork um, and it, it is quite startling. Now as you have will find or have found you are assigned to a team randomly. Um, we've tried uh, all sorts of ways of assigning groups and uh, there is no perfect way. Random assignment is the least worst of them all. So every group has to have an equal chance to succeed. And that's one of the reasons why there's a random assignment of groups. Now proof of marks, oh sorry, there is a pool of marks um, and the team gets to allocate those marks. Okay, it, it's, it is a team subject all the way through is done by teams. Um, but the uh, individual effort has to be recognized. So what happens is that um, the marks that the group gets for their uh, first half term deliverables and their end deliverables are put in a pool and given to the team. The team then determines how to allocate those marks among the group and then sends the, sends the answer back to me. That way the group can acknowledge and reward um, superior performance or, or better contribution of the, the um, team and can also punish a lack of performance. Now, uh, some, some students have an unfortunate run of events and simply can't contribute to the group and uh, although um, everybody's very sympathetic, basically they didn't actually contribute much and so they shouldn't get too many marks. Uh, sometimes um, a group member just simply doesn't participate at all and that um, they shouldn't get any marks and that's quite um, quite okay. At least it's quite okay to give them no marks. Um, but generally you should recognize, recognize effort and uh, punish lack of effort.